Okay, welcome to part one of this tutorial series. Um, in this part, we're going to, um, well, again, this is going to be quite a short tutorial. People, you have to start requesting longer ones. Um, sorry, okay. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so, what we're going to do in this part is just quickly go over the folder structure and all that, um, and then get on to creating the function. Um, so, uh, what we have here is the root of our site. So, this test.php file is the um, page I showed you in the previous uh, video uh, and then this core folder will contain like all of the back-end type stuff for the site so if we just open up this folder you can see we have this init.inc.php file and this config.inc.php file the init file is one that we've met in pretty much every other video um, all it does is set up the system basically so it will include any library files that we need or uh, it'll like start the session, open a database connection, that kind of thing. Uh, stuff that we needed to happen on all of the pages, basically. Uh, Back-end stuff, that is. Um, and this config file is where sort of settings are defined, if you like. So in this file, we're going to be st uh, defining the server address and the server, well, the IP, uh, sorry, the port that mine query is listening on. Um, and I'll just explain that a little bit when we get to it. Um, the reason we have it here and not like hard coded somewhere is because uh, it's something we may want to change. If, for example, you change the port that the server is running on, you may want to be able to quickly change this. And if you've used the port in a number of places, it's kind of nice just to be able to change one value rather than having to go through and potentially miss quite a few uh, of, of them, uh, which would make your site not work. So that's why we have this config file. Um, and then we have this ink folder, which again we've met in pretty much every other video. And if we just open that up, uh, we see this mc.inc.php. And this is where we're going to be defining our qu uh, function to query the server and get the like various information, the player list, basically. So that's that. Um, so what we're going to do now is go back to our root and get on with the code. So uh, I've got these four uh, files that we just saw here open, these four files. Um, I've got them open here. At the moment they're currently blank, so you see this mc.inc.php is empty, as is config init and test.php just has a simple HTML template sort of starting point if you like. Um, so what we're going to do first is go to our init file and just do this first because then we can close it because it's just quite simple. Uh, get it out of the way if you like. So what we do first is the same as always, we define a variable called path which is equal to dir name of the file constant. Um, I've explained this in loads of my other videos, so I'm not going to go over it here. But just a quick thing, make sure you put two underscores either side. This is two, not one. Uh, and then we can use this to include our files, because the um, path variable now contains the full server path, the absolute path to the core folder that I showed you a minute ago. So we can use that to include our files. Um, so what we do, whoops, we use quotes, not pound signs. We include path slash config dot inc dot php because that is one of the files we'll need on pretty much every page. And then we also include the um, path variable again. Whoops. So we put these things around it. Slash inc slash mc dot inc dot php which is the function which will con um, sorry the file which will contain all of the functions for working with the Minecraft server. So that's that file done. Um, we can just test this now by going to our test.php file and at the top we'll add a PHP block like so. Oops. And then just here we will add include to include the init file core slash init dot inc dot php. And then if we go to our browser and hit reload uh, did that reload? I guess it did. Uh, hit reload, uh, we don't see any errors, which means that all of the files have been included. That means that we can now close our init file, because that's done. Next thing we're going to do is the config file. So in our config file, we're going to define two variables. Well, we're going to define one variable, but two values. It's going to be an array, um, and we're just going to call it config, because all of the config goes in the config variable. Um, and this is going to be an associative array um, and sort of the first key, if you like, is going to be server because this section of the config file is related to the actual Minecraft server 
and the first config variable it for the server is going to be its IP and then we're going to set this equal to my public server which is sv2.xhcp.co.uk um, that's that done then we need to also define the port that mine query is running on which by default is 25566 uh, and you can change it but I'm not going to go into that there's plenty of information on the forum post page so we're just going to duplicate this line essentially config uh, server um, port and this is going to be equal to 25566 without that 3 and that is configurable like I said and that's our config file done now so we can just go back to our test.php page and use these variables to create a page title so in the title tag here we can do php echo config server ip and what this will do hopefully is put the server address in the title so going back to a page and hitting reload uh, you can see here that sv2.xhcp.co.uk has now appeared so that means that that's basically worked and if we just view the page source just bring this up a bit you can see that between the title tags we have the server IP um, and just to make it a bit more friendly we're just going to add the word status after that and then down here in this div tag which is where our sort of um, page content is going to go we're just going to add a h1 tag or we're not, I'm not clicked on the right thing focused even we're going to add a h1 tag so oops header 1 uh, and this is just going to contain the server IP so we can copy and paste this here like so uh, and now you can see sort of why you would want the config variables because say your server changed your address changed of the server you would have to change it here and here whereas in the config file you just have to change it once and it will be sort of carry forward if you like to here. Um, obviously this example is a bit pointless because it's not that difficult to change two things but in a more complicated site uh, like if this was actually applied to use in a website it might be harder to find the right parts of the code um, and well it's a, you know it's just a bit easier. So anyway we can reload this again and we should see the server IP in massive letters. So that's good, that's working. So the next thing we need to do is code our function that we're going to use to get the server information. So if we just go to our backend file, mc.inc.php, we're going to code this function. So the function is going to be defined as we normally do with the function keyword, and it's going to be called fetch server info. And this function is going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be the server IP, and the second one is going to be the server port. Um, and to query the mine query server, um, well, let's just go to the forum post actually because it explains it quite nicely. Just scroll all the way down here. Um, it says here if you're feeling code savvy, you'll want to issue this request to the query server. So, what we can do is send query in capital letters to the server, and then the server will respond with something like this. Or alternatively, we can send query underscore JSON. Um, and the server will respond with something like this. Um, this is a lot more sort of useful to us because PHP has a function to decode um, a string like this into an array um, and that's why we're going to be using this instead of having to sort of manually um, pass this output and sort of work it out. Although it wouldn't be too difficult really because it's sort of quite nicely laid out. But this is just as easy, well no it's easier for us but it's just the same amount of load on the server I assume. <laughs> um, I'd imagine JSON encoding is very difficult, but anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is sort of get this output. Uh, and what we need to do is open a connection to the mine query server and write this string to it. And that will sort of have the server produce this and then we can fetch it. So it's pretty simple. In fact, there's even something you can download if you want to cheat, which is this thing here. So anyway, going back to our actual site, uh, what the first thing we need to do, like I said, is open a connection to the mine query server. And we do that by using the fsoc open function. And this will open a socket connection to the um, IP that you give it and the port. So what we can do is just pass in the IP and the port. Um, and it also takes three more parameters. 
The next one is the error number. Error number. Mm, that looks weird. Uh, let's call it that. Uh, the second one is the error, str error string. Um, we're not actually going to be using these because it's not really necessary for this. Um, but you do need to pass these in to be able to um, use the final parameter, which is we are going to be using, which is the socket timeout. Uh, by default, this is something like 30 seconds. So if your server is offline, your page won't load for 30 seconds while PHP tries to open a connection. Um, so what we're going to do is change this to 0 0.5, so half a second, which should be more than enough time to get a connection to the server. Um, even if it's like quite overloaded, you should be able to get a connection immediately. Uh, the next part might take a little while, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so 0 0.5 will do. Uh, you can obviously change this if you have problems. So I tested it on my server, 0 0.5 seemed about right. Um, these two variables, by the way, by passing these variables in, uh, after the call to this function, these will contain a value. Error no will contain, uh, short for error number, and it will contain zero if the connection was successful. Like I mentioned in the previous Minecraft video. Anyway, to actually work with this uh, connection, we need to store the socket in a variable so we can write to it. And we do that just by setting it equal to this function, like so. And now the fsoc open function will return false if no connection can be made, i.e. if the server is offline. So we can just check that here now. So we can do if socket equals false uh, return false. So we'll have this function return false if the server can't be reached, i.e. if it's offline or crashed or whatever, you know, something's gone wrong. So, once we've established that the server is online, we need to write that query JSON string to it. So we do that using the fwrite function. It takes two parameters. The first one is the uh, file pointer, actually, but you can also pass in a socket connection type thingy. Um, so we just pass in socket, like so. And then the second parameter is the string that you want to write, which was query underscore JSON. And we also need a new line after that to sort of simulate hitting the enter key in a way, um, which will actually sort of send the command instead of just having it written and not um, processed by the server. Uh, it's just to do with the way my query works, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, that's that done. That will now return the output that I showed you from the previous page, the JSON string. Um, and we can get this output uh, by using a function. So we can do, um, well, the function is called stream get contents. Oops. This function takes one parameter, which is the socket or stream. Oh dear. I was one to the right on my keyboard. <laughs> um, this stream get contents function is similar to the file get contents function, except that it um, works with open socket connections, essentially, open streams. So this would be a file pointer or a socket connection like this. And all it does is get all remaining output and return it as a string. So it's sort of similar to what you would like before. If you like um, with PHP 4, you'd have to do a while loop here to get all of the output. If you're familiar with that, this function just basically does that. Anyway, uh, we've got the output. We're not doing anything with it. So we're going to store it in a new variable called response. Repons, response uh, equals stream get contents. But because this is a JSON string, we can simply do return because we want to return the out to return the result now. JSON decode response. Uh, there we go. Uh, and we also need to pass true as the second argument to this function. Uh, I'll explain a little bit about that in a moment. Well, a little bit later on. Uh, by default, the JSON function. Um, returns an object, and by passing true, we sort of force it to return an array instead, which is a little bit easier to work with. Um, so the last thing we need to do is just quickly add a quick comment to um, tell people what this function does. So, um, fetches server information from mine query. There we go. Um, and that's that basically done. So. Uh, I'll actually end this part here because we've come to a nice place to stop and also it's 14 minutes and 55 seconds 
So thanks for watching and join me in part two where I'll show you how to actually create that page um, using this function.